When construction on our new home began, my husband lost his job. He had promised to pay half the mortgage, even if it meant taking on part-time work, but he didn't even try to find another job. As the house neared completion, he suggested something outrageous. My dear niece is getting married, so I've decided to give her this house as a wedding gift. We can always buy another house. If you oppose this, let's divorce immediately. I was shocked, but I knew my husband's secret, so if he was serious, I was ready to agree to a divorce. He smirked, thinking he'd have his way, and immediately filed for divorce. Then he asked about dividing the property. When I threatened to reveal this secret, his attitude changed dramatically. With support from an unexpected person, his plan took a drastic turn. We've been married for three years now, and next year I'll turn 30 with my husband in his mid-30s. We discussed having children, considering the physical demands and the fact that one can't stay healthy forever. I wanted to have kids in my early 30s and shared this with him. He said we shouldn't force it if it seemed too much, but he also wanted children. He suggested that our small home might not be ideal for raising a child and we should consider buying a bigger house. Raising a child requires money and even if we bought a house, we face a nearly 30-year mortgage. In 30 years, my husband would be in his mid-60s, nearing retirement. He didn't want to burden our children with financial hardships because of the mortgage. My mother worked full-time while raising me and taking care of the house. She worked until retirement, supporting my father and me, respecting her dedication. I decided to work while maintaining our home, planning carefully to ensure our new home project succeeded. We chose a home builder and planned everything, deciding to pay a substantial down payment from our savings to avoid future mortgage difficulties. Just as we were finalizing everything, my husband's company went bankrupt and he lost his job without receiving any severance pay. When I asked if there had been any warning signs, he snapped, saying he couldn't have known since he wasn't a top executive. One morning, he went to work but couldn't enter the building. A notice was posted stating the company had gone bankrupt the day before and the president and other executives had fled overnight. There was no severance pay and we weren't getting his salary for the month. I suggested we put our home plans on hold because it seemed too risky, but my husband insisted on continuing with the construction since we had come this far. He hoped to find re-employment soon without being picky, so I agreed to wait. He started visiting the employment office and looking for jobs online, energetically. He even took short-term jobs until something permanent came along. However, these jobs were on a registration basis, so it was unclear when work would be available. His actions and his promise to share the mortgage payments reassured me of his commitment. My income was stable, and it seemed we wouldn't struggle financially for now, so I decided to go ahead and build our new house. So far, you might think my husband is very reliable. However, he has an odd obsession with his niece. His older sister had a child young, making him an uncle early on, he dotes on his niece, even though his sister lives far away due to her husband's job transfer. He has given his niece expensive gifts, far beyond the usual amount for an allowance or Christmas money. Once, he gave $11,000 as Christmas money, which I thought was too much even for his beloved niece. When sending gifts by mail, he would report the expenses to me, but I felt uneasy because there was never any acknowledgement from his sister. Once, when unexpected expenses piled up, I questioned my husband's sanity upon learning he had spent a lot on a gift for his niece. Since then, I've often been troubled by my husband's excessive affection for his niece, especially now that he's unemployed. Thankfully, he's not spending extravagantly on her, but he spends a lot of time away from home, supposedly job hunting. He leaves earlier than when he was working and comes back late. Are job centers even open that late? When I asked, he said he was attending briefings and exchanging information. It's good that he's motivated, but he's neglected our new home's construction, leaving everything to me. He arrogantly asked to share the house's title, but left all other responsibilities to me. 
When I gently reminded him to take an interest in our home, he sighed, exhausted from job hunting, implying he was doing his best. I was also tired from balancing work, the new house, and household chores, so I didn't want to argue and stayed silent. I later worry he might suggest that since I made all the decisions, I should pay the mortgage. I brought up setting clear terms for payments, but he didn't want to dip into his personal savings until he found a job, saying it was to avoid burdening me in case of emergencies. I thought it was more important to focus on the present rather than potential future issues. No matter how I explained it, he insisted on not touching his savings and wanted me to handle the mortgage for now. I felt his suggestion was too convenient for him, so I demanded a promissory note for the period I would cover the mortgage. Reluctantly, he agreed, complaining but realizing it would be troublesome if I questioned him further. We agreed that once he found a job, he would repay half of the mortgage I had paid. He signed the document, which I stored securely. Despite our initial agreement, there were numerous breakdowns in our promises until our new home was completed. My husband, who had said he would find a job quickly without being picky, still hadn't secured re-employment as the completion date approached. Even the temp jobs he registered for had several offers, but he made excuses and declined them. I was unwilling to support a husband who made no effort, so I frequently urged him to find a job. He avoided the issue, and our arguments increased. Meanwhile, our new house was finally completed and moving in became possible. But under the current circumstances, not only was moving difficult, but living with my husband was too. In fact, since my husband lost his job, I had gathered various pieces of information I wanted to discuss, including the fact that he still hadn't found work. One day, when my husband left for the job center, I told him I wanted him to spend the day with me because there were serious things we needed to discuss. He tried to dodge the conversation, saying that job hunting was his top priority and we could talk another day. It's unclear if he's even had any interviews, but not going to the job center for one day wouldn't cause any harm, so I insisted he listen to me. Then he said something outrageous. A nagging woman isn't cute, you know. Actually, I have something to tell you, too. I thought I might wait a bit longer, but since it's good news, now is as good a time as any. My niece is getting married, so I've decided to give her the new house as a present. We can split the mortgage and keep paying it together. What? I was amazed by his abnormal doting on his niece and his sense of money before, but giving away a house as a gift? Why would he decide something so important without consulting me? This was the first I'd heard about his niece getting married. I confronted my husband, asking if he really thought it was acceptable to make such a decision without talking to me. He then threatened divorce if I disagreed. He was the one who initiated the discussion about building a new home, yet there had been no progress while he remained unemployed. He kept making uncertain promises about work. Despite his plausible words, his actions didn't match. I laughed at his words and actions, feeling disillusioned. I had a feeling he might come up with the ridiculous idea of giving away the house. It seemed tied to something else, so I bombarded him with questions. Are you sane? You're unemployed and you're planning to give a house with an outstanding mortgage to your niece? Do you think she'll be happy with that? Who would transfer a house with a 30-year mortgage as a wedding gift? It seems like bad luck. I also grilled him about our plans to have children since we bought the house for our growing family. My husband reacted aggressively to my questions. He hinted at divorce without addressing my concerns. It felt like I was talking to a completely different person. Our conversation went nowhere, and I realized my husband was far less reasonable than I thought. Since I had been considering suggesting divorce myself, I readily accepted his proposal. However, I said I wanted my demands met in return. He replied he'd listen to anything if I agreed to keep the house. I told him, then I don't mind if you file for divorce first, but I want the division of property to happen after the divorce is finalized. I also want to rush my preparations for living alone, so please wait until I'm settled. 
My husband agreed to follow whatever I said if he could file for divorce immediately. In reality, wanting time to prepare to live alone was a pretext. I had things I needed to do without him knowing. I needed time to prepare for living alone as a way to buy time so that my husband wouldn't find out about it. After a while, when I had finished everything I needed to do, I was waiting for the right moment to contact him. Then, perhaps losing patience or realizing something, he contacted me first, asking, What's going on? Why is the new house being sold? That house is supposed to be a gift for my niece, and it's jointly owned property, right? If you do something like this without telling me, I won't pay the mortgage. My husband was furious about the sale of our shared property without informing him. He insulted me and refused to listen to my side. I waited for him to tire from yelling. Then I said, I knew you were going to push the payments onto me alone. Did you really think it was still jointly owned? You were so keen on divorce. I thought you'd have checked that part when we divorced. At that time when my husband had asked to keep the house jointly owned, it was indeed jointly owned. However, suspecting he would eventually refuse to pay anything and claim the house as his own, I had changed the ownership. Sure enough, once the house was finished, my husband started talking nonsense about gifting it to his niece. Thinking his true intentions hadn't been revealed, I threw all my finances into paying off the mortgage in one go. In fact, when my parents heard we were building a house, they sold a mountain they had inherited from my grandfather, turned it into cash, and gave it to me to help with the payments. My parents always preferred to make large purchases in one payment, believing it wasn't good to easily take out a mortgage on something as uncertain as the future. So when building the house, they financially supported me so I could pay in full without taking out a mortgage. I could have followed my parents' advice, but just as I was about to discuss this, my husband became unemployed. Thinking that if he knew about the money, he would become an even worse person, I kept silent. Also, if I had paid in full, my husband, with his attitude, would likely never repay the money, which would have been disrespectful to my parents' feelings. So I hadn't told him. My husband was furious when he discovered the name change without his consent. He complained that I had broken our promise to keep the house. The house is still there, isn't it? It's not destroyed, and it's still habitable, right? If it ends up in someone else's hands, the house still exists, so you have no right to complain. If you really want it, you can buy it back, right? What I do with the house, fully paid for by me, the owner is my business. Of course, I had the option to live in that house, but living in a house planned with my ex-husband felt like bad luck, and I wasn't inclined to do so. My husband, upset about the house being sold, said I was being ridiculous, but insisted that he had the right to receive part of the money from the house sale since it was marital property. He demanded, check the exact amount later, but give me some of it now. I told my husband that we should meet because I had more to tell him. When we met at the designated location, my husband started to say something as soon as he saw me. Before he could speak, I showed him something that made him swallow his words and stare intently. It was the result of a private detective's investigation into his behavior. The evidence included a prominently enlarged photo of him kissing another woman on the street, along with pictures of them dining at expensive restaurants and entering a hotel. According to the report, my husband did look for a job for a few days after losing his previous one. However, people close to his affair partner revealed that they had met around the time construction on our new house began and had been seeing each other almost daily since then. He had portrayed himself as single, dating with marriage in mind, and claimed he couldn't find a job due to his company's bankruptcy and the poor economy. This earned him sympathy from the other woman, along with money as he told her he was living on the edge without savings. His actions were akin to those of a marriage scammer, hinting at marriage to demand money and gifts. I felt nauseous when I discovered this. His sudden insistence on divorce seemed to stem from being fed up with everything, especially whenever I brought up the mortgage or his uncooperative attitude. It appeared he planned to switch to his affair partner, who is more compliant and sympathetic than me. 
The talk about giving the new house to his niece also seemed to be a tactic to push me toward divorce. I quickly realized he intended to use my refusal as a reason for the divorce. While he thought he was getting his way, in reality, he was just playing into my hands. I had suspected something was off, so I hired a detective, uncovering the affair. Using the new house as an excuse was unexpected, but I had already decided to divorce him once I knew about the affair. This was what I wanted to discuss with him before we moved into the new house. Initially, I planned to confront him about the affair and then announce the divorce. However, seeing his irrational behavior, I realized reasoning with him was futile, so I let him think he was in control while I prepared my countermeasures. With all the evidence in hand, I told him, I have solid evidence of your infidelity. With this much proof, you can't deny it. I will be demanding compensation from you. He retorted, you knew and kept quiet. What kind of woman stays silent knowing her husband is cheating? Not a decent one, that's for sure. His audacity was astounding, bringing up the idea of a loving husband. I couldn't help but snore in disbelief. When I countered his words, he hesitated for a moment. Then, as if struck by a brilliant idea, he claimed he was entitled to a share of our assets. That's when I played my final card and called my father-in-law. I told him over the phone that my husband was demanding a share of the property. My husband started ranting about why I needed to contact his father, but when I told him that his father wanted to speak with him, he fell silent. I put the phone on speaker and my father-in-law's scolding came through loud and clear. He chastised my husband for his affair, saying, What is a man over thirty doing? Don't you feel ashamed? He further berated him for causing a family breakdown and then having the nerve to ask for a share of the property. My husband has always had a difficult relationship with his father, unable to stand up to him since childhood. My father-in-law despises dishonesty and especially those who hurt or deceive others. After my husband brought up divorce, I was the first to consult my father-in-law, asking for his help if I couldn't handle it alone. He supported me, saying, throw away a man who cheats. I'll give him a piece of my mind right away. However, I had a lot I wanted to say to my cheating husband, and if my father-in-law got involved too soon, my husband might have run away. So I asked my father-in-law to stay silent. Part of the reason I wanted to stall after the divorce was to arrange a meeting with my father-in-law. I also needed time to sell the house without my husband finding out. Additionally, I wanted to clarify my husband's relationship with his niece in front of my father-in-law. So, I called my sister-in-law and asked to speak with my niece. I inquired if she had ever received expensive gifts or large amounts of money from my husband. My niece said she had never received anything that could be considered a gift from him. My sister-in-law added that even when they lived closer, he would come to her birthday parties without bringing anything more than a cheap birthday card. I also asked about marriage plans. She mentioned having a boyfriend, but there were no discussions of marriage, and she was puzzled about where that idea had originated. She had never expressed a desire for the house and, in fact, would find it troubling and inconvenient if it were given to her. Both my sister-in-law and my father-in-law were surprised to hear my husband claim to be doting on his niece. So, where had the money my husband claimed to have spent on her gone? My sister-in-law provided some valuable background. When my husband was twenty, my father-in-law worked away from home. One day, the police called to inform my mother-in-law that my husband had been caught in a raid at an illegal casino. Fearing his strict father would find out, he begged his mother, who picked him up from the police station, to keep it a secret, and knelt before her, confessing everything. He had been stealing valuable items from their storehouse to sell for gambling money. He promised to quit, but his mother suspected it was more than just a habit. It seemed like a pathological addiction. When my father-in-law heard about it, he checked the inventory and found several items missing. My father-in-law confronted my husband, asking if he was still gambling and using his niece as a cover. He scolded him, saying, What a luxurious life for an unemployed man. Property division isn't meant to fund your gambling habits. He told my husband to come home, 
saying he would straighten him out. Unable to oppose his father, my husband turned pale and declined the property division, agreeing to pay compensation later through a lawyer my father-in-law arranged for me. I received official documents stating my husband had relinquished his claim to our property, and I obtained all shared assets. Additionally, thanks to my father-in-law's consideration, I received a higher-than-usual compensation in one lump sum. Honestly, I had felt hatred towards the woman involved in the affair. However, during the investigation into my husband's conduct, I also looked into her situation, and my feelings towards her changed. She believed my husband was single and struggling. Despite her financial difficulties, she had given him money, thinking she was helping someone in need. She was, in fact, a victim, too. Moreover, she apologized tearfully for her role in breaking up my family and offered a small amount of money as compensation, which I appreciated but did not accept. I told her that since she was also deceived by my husband, she could probably claim compensation from him. His pretense of marriage to extract money and gifts amounted to fraud, and she could also demand the return of the money she had given him. Prompted by this, she quickly took action. She stormed into the family home where my father-in-law was, pointed at my husband, and declared that she had been deceived by the promise of marriage. This caused my father-in-law to explode in anger at my husband. He told her she could file a police report if she wanted and even suggested she make a scene to force my husband to go to the police immediately. My husband pleaded with both her and my father-in-law, begging them to spare him from the police. He promised to return all the money he had taken from her. All of my husband's meager savings went towards paying compensation and repaying the affair partner, leaving him broke. Since my father-in-law had just retired and had plenty of time, he kept a close watch on my husband, even following him to the bathroom and dictating his every move. He drove him to the job center daily, pressing him to find a job quickly. Unable to endure a home life stricter than prison, my husband fled while his father was asleep. However, having no money, he couldn't stand the hunger and returned to his father's house after just two days. Whether he tried to live at home or escape, my father-in-law was exasperated by his lack of resolve and disappointed. He disowned and kicked him out of the house. With nowhere to go and no money, my husband broke into the family storehouse and stole antique items, just as he had done before. However, my father-in-law, aware of his past thefts, had secured the storehouse with surveillance cameras and a contract with a security company. The police were immediately alerted, sealing my husband's fate with a second police encounter. This time there was no mother-in-law to help him, as she was no longer alive and my sister-in-law, injured by the exploitation of her daughter, refused to offer any help. My father-in-law refused to take him back, suggesting he be disciplined inside the walls. Naturally, I also refused, saying that he was now a stranger to me. Now that the house has been sold and I have the money, I'm considering investing in some personal refreshment. I've rented an apartment on the top floor of a building I've always wanted to live in. From there, I plan to enjoy the view and treat myself to some delicious food, rewarding myself for the years I endured with my husband.